Hey everyone, this video is going to look at some examples of functions whose derivative is going to require us to use the chain rule more than one time. If you'd like to review the steps of the chain rule, watch my calculus, the chain rule explained video by clicking here. Okay, let's look at example one. So it says, take the derivative with respect to x of sine of the natural log of x squared. So the chain rule says to take the derivative of our function times the derivative of whatever's on the inside. So we know the derivative of sine is cosine, so we're going to get cosine of the natural log of x squared times the derivative of the natural log of x squared. Now this cosine ln x squared over here is going to stay the same, and when we take the derivative of ln x squared over here, we have to use the chain rule again multiplying by the derivative of what's on the inside of the natural log. So in the end we're going to get cosine of the natural log of x squared times the derivative of natural log of x squared so the derivative of the natural log is always 1 over whatever's on the inside times the derivative of x squared which is 2x. So that's going to be the answer for example 1 using the chain rule twice. All right, now let's look at example two. So this says take the derivative with respect to x of e to the cosine of x cubed. So the chain rule says take the derivative of our function times the derivative of whatever's on the inside. So we know the derivative of the exponential is always itself, so we're gonna get e to the cosine x cubed times the derivative of cosine x cubed. So this e to the cosine x cubed over here is gonna stay the same. And when we're taking the derivative of cosine x cubed over here, the chain rule says to take the derivative of our function times the derivative of the function inside, which is x cubed. All right. So in the end, we're going to get e to the cosine x cubed times the derivative of cosine x cubed, which is negative sine of x cubed times the derivative of x cubed, which is going to be 3x squared using the power rule. And that's going to be the final answer for example 2 over here. So it's functions like these that are going to require us to use the chain rule within the chain rule. I hope this helps clear things up, and thanks for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, please subscribe, like, and share with your friends.